Well, uh, my name is Jeremy. I am one of the pastors on staff here at LifePoint. It is my uh, honor to serve all of you in whatever capacity I can. And I'm excited for today. I was not expecting to speak, but I am excited to speak because, and God's word is unfailing. And his word is powerful, and it does not matter uh, who brings that word. When we rely on the truth of his word, man, things happen. I have a spirit of expectation for today, and I hope you are the same. I hope you came today prepared to hear God's word. And we come not only with the expectation of, of hearing and experiencing, but that he's going to deposit something deep inside of our hearts that we are going to carry out into the world that he has entrusted to us, that we will be ambassadors in everything that we do. So who's ready to hear the word this morning? Yeah. Amen. Awesome. Uh, man, Pastor Mike is out of town. He and his family are making their way back from the great white north of Canada. And uh, so they are on a plane right now heading back. Uh, so we, we just, uh, man, pray for them as they, uh, as they come back with a safe flight and a safe trip back up to Prescott. Uh, we are currently in a message series, uh, Sticks X Stones, Sticks Stick by Stones, Stick Tilty Cross Stone. I think, oh. Sticks and stones, I think is what it's supposed to elicit in our minds, but uh, sticks and stones. And we're all familiar with this, with this phrase from our childhood, and sticks and stones may break my bones, but, and it's such a filthy lie. It's so dumb. Like, I remember being a kid, and when I was, when I was young, and I was, uh, like, the nerdiest of the nerd herd, and I did not have a, a ton of friends, and kids were pretty unkind to me. Uh, because of the way I dressed, my, my parents were very conservative, and so like I wasn't allowed to wear uh, that graphic T-shirts that was underwear. So I had to wear like button downs and stuff, and so these kids would make fun of me. And I, I would say, you know, oh yeah, sticks and stones would break my words never hurt me. You know, you turn around and bawling, and it's, it's, it's bad. Like it's 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 something that we tell ourselves, but unfortunately, it also masks what we're actually supposed to do. We we push these things down and we act like it doesn't hurt, but then it has incredible significance and ramifications for our hearts, our heart condition. We want to look at that today. Well, we've been learning over the past few weeks, um, Pastor Mike and Jesse last week, uh, I would encourage you, go online, lifepointaz.com, watch those sermons. There's a lot to unpack there. We've been hanging out in James, in the book of James, and, um, and there's, there's so much about the power of the tongue. And one of the things that they've been driving home is that it really, what we speak actually reveals a heart condition. It reveals a heart condition. And so it, the word even tells us out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so examining those things and uh, so take, take a listen to those messages and really begin to, to have that thing of, okay, if I'm saying this and that means that something's in my heart, what is that thing that is spilling out into, uh, into the world around me? by way of my words. Uh, I would like to just read James 3, 5, and 6 to start this morning. This will kind of be one of our, our pivotal passages for today. So if you have a Bible, turn there. If you have your device, um, punch in all those letters and numbers to get to James 3, 5. Consider how large a forest a small fire ignites, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue a world of unrighteousness is placed among the parts of our bodies. It pollutes the whole body. It sets the course of life on fire and is set on fire by hell. I mean, that's, that's like, that's heavy, that's weighty stuff. We are to understand the importance of what our tongue is capable of. And so today I really want to speak on this thing of, of speaking out of a whole heart, out of a healed heart. Would you pray with me? Father God, we, uh, we, we ask that you would be in these next moments. Lord, I pray that you would stir our hearts and our minds to action. Lord, I pray that as, uh, as we read your word, as we digest what you are trying to uh, implant in our hearts and our minds, God, that you would be at the very center of it. May we glorify you. May I be an instrument today for you, for your glory, for your good. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So words, words are crazy. Uh, we lived cross-culturally for a couple of years in the South Pacific, and words have 
all kinds of significance. And especially if you don't know exactly how to use words, then things can get lost in translation. I remember there was this one time uh, we were fairly new and the, the island nation that we were serving in the Southwest Pacific, um, they had uh, kind of a trade language. So there's a lot of English and, um, and stuff mixed in. But I had I'd just been kind of picking up little bits and pieces of, of things. And so they're like, hey, you know, missionary, we, we kind of understand English, but um, we, we'd like to hear you speak also as much Bishlama, their, their language, as, as you can. And so I'm like, you know, supposed to be in town observing things and hearing things. Well, so I, I get up to speak on one Sunday, and I keep using this phrase, my what? Thinking that it's like just this exclamation of like, oh, goodness. And every time people are like, oh, like, oh man, I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm bringing it. So I get off the stage, and the guy who's kind of my guide, he says, hey, uh, you cannot say that in church ever again. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, that's cursing. Uh, oh, oh, no. So here I come off the stage, and I've been like, saying naughty things in church from the pulpit to all these people. And, uh, and so words have significance, right? But, uh, but then also uh, sometimes things do get lost in translation. I, I had a, a few things that I grabbed off the interwebs. Uh, if we, aha, here we go. So to translate, due to happenstance beyond e, our control, this elevator is so broken. It's so broken. Happenstance, man. It's just so broken. So we, we get the idea, but still, there's probably a better way to use those words. All right, how, how about this next one? The high-maintenance chick salon. <laughs> like, you kind of have an understanding of where they're trying to go, but, man, talk about really losing the significance there. So, yeah, high-maintenance chicks, you can go there. And get all your high-maintenance stuff done. Yes, English 102, grammar and writing. You can learn how to ride a horse while learning how to compose an essay, possibly. It's good. All right, we had one last one here. Attention, what probability? The probability is more uh, because you probably just mocked. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a very high probability of being wet. So, man, the, the, the way that we use words and the way that we combine words, it is supposed to convey a message. And, and what we are warned about in the Bible is the use of these words. That we are not to be idle, we're not to use empty words, we are to be very intentional with how we use words. Because when we do so, we actually can sow into people's lives, and it depends on what we say, that what the fruit will be, and what we sow in our own hearts and in the hearts of others. Uh, in Matthew 12, 36, Matthew 12, 36, this is a sister passage that Pastor Mike uh, touched on a few weeks ago to the one in James. But this is Jesus talking. Very, very important. It says, I tell you that on the day of judgment, people will have to account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. By your words, you will be acquitted. By your words, you will be condemned. And this thing of careless, this thing of careless words, or empty words. So looking this up, and this is, this is another reason, um, like you'll hear us often from stage talk about like the Greek, the Hebrew, and, and, uh, and these different things from, from the word, because we, we want to understand and the fullness of the meaning. So much of language is understanding the full meaning. And w uh, even though we have very talented people who are trying the best they can to get the meanings from the original language into English so we can understand, and there's so much richness of language that can get lost sometimes if we just pass by. So this, this word for careless or empty, it means these very things, idle, lazy words, thoughtless words, unprofitable words, and injurious words. And so let's take a look at, at each one of these for just a second. Idle words. And idle words, they just, they go nowhere. It's just like a car. I mean, you can sit in your car and make vroom vroom noises, and, and you can even turn it on and press the gas pedal, but if it's not in drive, and if you're just idling there, you're not going to make it to your destination. It makes no difference what you're doing in an idle car as far as making it anywhere outside of where you're sitting. We see this on full display this time of year, right? With politicians and all kinds of, like, they, they will talk, and they will talk, and they will talk, and at the end, you're like, I'm pretty sure zero was said. Nothing was said, man. Idle words, idle words, saying lots, but going absolutely nowhere. Lazy words. I know what I'm supposed to do, but it's not worth my effort. 
There are plenty of times where we can be very lazy with the words that we speak, knowing that we should be intentional, but then just say, man, it's just too hard. I don't have, I don't have it in me right now. I don't have the capacity for that. Laziness. Thoughtless words. No regard for how it will impact others. He's just tossing things out, just saying them to maybe even get a laugh or to do something, but it's that thoughtlessness of not even recognizing and, and, and understanding the full weight that we might have uh, we might be making in that very moment an impact, an eternal impact in someone's heart and mind. They can be unprofitable. It's not enriching. Like we, can, we can use words and we can talk and we can do these things, but if it's not sowing seeds into someone that's going to produce a harvest that has is, that is, uh, really been produced by what we're speaking through the Spirit of God, then it's not enriching them. And they can be straight up injurious. It just mean, just absolutely, like there, have, there are times when we will use our words and we're intentionally trying to cut to the core of someone and we're hoping it does even more damage than what we're expecting. Like those are injurious words. Those are all careless and those are all something that, that we are being warned against throughout God's word. But as Christians, we are not to live that way anymore. We are to be imitators of God. And God is a God who speaks. God is a God who speaks. It is an amazing thing that we have a God who is not idle. He is not careless. And that he is someone who continues to speak through his word, through our hearts, through the presence of the counselor of the Holy Spirit. God speaks. And so we are, be t- we are to be imitators of this quality of God. In Deuteronomy 32, 47, this is referencing the commands that he has given. They, they get through, he's given the tablets to Moses. And then in Deuteronomy 32, 47, it says this. These are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them you will live long the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. This is what God's words are meant to do. This is what our words should do. This is what our words should mimic and imitate. That They are not idle words, but they are life, and they are life-giving. And so much of the time, uh, even, even today, people will look at the, uh, the Bible, and they'll say, man, it's just a bunch of just rules and regulations and stuff. And God's saying, look, I, I didn't just say it to say it. I'm not trying to just impose a bunch of stuff just because, like, I was bored one day and didn't know what to do, so I started talking. Like he says, no, 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 these are not idle words. These are life. This is, this is how you can live in the fullness of what I have for you. That is his desire, and that is where we should speak out of. We should speak out of, of, of a place in our hearts where we are like, wait, I want to bring life to this person. I want to see the very best for them produced in their lives. Proverbs 18.8 says, A fool's mouth is his devastation. And his lips are a trap for his life. A gossip's words are like choice food that goes down to one's innermost being. So we see here that that our words can can spread. They can go far beyond. A gossip's words, that that, that person who's kind of whispering behind the scenes, hey, did you hear this, this thing? So so now they're not only just bringing down someone else, they're gathering people up and they're they're sowing dissent and, and, and disunity among other people in order to make themselves stand out, in order to bring someone else down. Regardless, those intentions are not actually to build and to create and to, to speak life, but they are to be made as an injury. And they go down those gossip words. They're like choice morsels. It says it goes deep inside. So now we come to, to James, James 3, 5. Consider how large a forest a small fire ignites. another one of those times consider like when we hear the word consider in the word we should consider so taking time just to think wait a second what is this what does this really look like consider how large a forest a small fire ignites and we know this all too well here in Arizona fortunately this fire season has been pretty uh, pretty chill 
but uh, we, have, we have seen devastating fires ignited uh, throughout our state. We know uh, what that looks like. And many times, it's, it's one of those careless acts. It's one of those careless things. It might be a, a spark. I mean, like a tiny, almost, almost minuscule, not barely visible to the naked eye spark from a chain that's been dragging behind a trailer that finds a little place in the weeds and then starts a forest on fire. Or, or a cigarette that's thrown out of a window. Something small. But then we see that the devastation that it brings to life, to property, to people as, they, as they're trying to flee the raging and ravishing uh, fire. And it also brings desolation. I'm sure many of us have, have seen and have walked in places where a fire has burned so hot that there is nothing left. And in many cases, when it burns that hot, the forest fires that we have in this area will actually kill things in the ground. So it is, it is complete destruction of life. And this, this is what James is saying. Hey, look, it's not just this small, insignificant thing. Your small actions, your small words can have an incredible impact that brings devastation and desolation and destruction. What happens in others, we may not even think. But a small spark like, you'll never be. And three words took less than a second to say. And we move on. But in that person's heart, and we have just, we have just created a fissure. We've created something that we've aligned with the enemy to bring devastation and desolation to their heart. And they begin, like it's that thing of going into the innermost being. And they begin to think on that. And it becomes something they agree with. So these careless words like James is talking about and, and, and admonishing us, hey, don't, don't do this, will happen in a moment's time but will have lasting and devastating consequences. And why aren't you more like, again, a short period of time, just a few words, but with lasting and devastating consequences to the hearer? And who invited you? Like these, these things of rejection, of humiliation, those do not just roll off the back. Words will never hurt me. But they go to a very deep place in our hearts. What, what happens to us? And this, this is what we say to others matters because it does something in them, but it also does something in us. James 3, 6, the tongue is a fire, the tongue a world of unrighteousness is placed among the parts of our bodies. It pollutes the whole body. Our whole body can be polluted because of the careless, nasty, hurtful words that we say. Our entire body can be polluted by that. It sets the course of life on fire and is set on fire by hell. And for us, that thing of setting a course of our life on fire, when we are aligning with this this thing of of speaking careless words when we're allowing those things that are in our hearts and where we've been hurt before to then produce something out of our mouths, it is setting our course uh, and our path um, of life on fire. It's it's bringing destruction to us, but it's also setting that path of someone else on fire as well. And it's not not a a cleansing fire, man. This is a fire that is set by hell. Ephesians 4, 29 through 32 says, No foul language is to come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need, so that it gives grace, so that it gives grace to those who hear. It says, Don't grieve the Holy uh, don't, don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. That we can actually bring grief and how our words can grieve the Holy Spirit because he's like, I made this person in my image. And now, now there's, there's, there's a filter that's being put on because of the words, the careless words that someone has said. We can grieve the Holy Spirit because of our words. And I don't want to be in that spot ever because we're sealed for a day of redemption. Our words should be redeeming 
And there are so many people that are in need. There are so many people that need to hear from the Holy Spirit of God. And we do not want to put um, like earplugs in their ears where they are having a more difficult time. But we want to align ourselves with God's Holy Spirit to reinforce what he is working in their lives. And with our tongue, we're either partnering with hell or we can partner with heaven. This is the choice that's before us. It's very clear. Ephesians 4.25 says, Now since you've put away lying, speak the truth. Each one to his neighbor because we are members of one another. Since you've put away lying, like if we're going to live differently, if we're going to sever this tie to the old things, speak the truth. Speak the truth. Each one to his neighbor. Why? Because we're members of one another. Man, we're in this fight together. And I think a common lie that we align with is, is that that person's my enemy. And we have a common enemy, and it's not one another. It is Satan. It is Satan, man. He is the one who comes to steal and kill and destroy. He is the enemy of men's souls. So what, what kind of truth are we to speak? Not the, not the like, well... It's true, not that kind of truth, man, but the truth of God's word. It's not our truth, man. It is the truth that we are to speak over people's lives. It is important that we digest that we are, are in his word, not only because it, it, it is part of that armor of God that allows us to step out into a hostile world, but when we read his word, man, we can go to someone in truth and in love and begin to speak life, scripture, and truth over them. Just yesterday, my wife and I were uh, having lunch with some friends, and man, there was, it was, it's just cool because they're, they're a powerhouse couple, man. They love prayer. They love, man, just, just getting people with Jesus. And so what, what started as chicken salad ended up as like tears and uh, prayer and warfare. <laughs> so uh, be careful. Be careful. What you ask for but uh, so it was, it was awesome. But with all this, man, there was a moment there where we were talking about heart issues. And uh, the guy says, hey, you know what? God's really put this on my heart. A bruised reed, he will not break. And it, it just went, like everything. It was like that, that moment in a movie where like, you know, everything came into focus. I'm like, yes. Like the, the, the word, the truth of God's word and that his heart for me is good and that he cares and that like all these things that he's not going to break this in me. He's going to build this. He's going to heal like all those things. And I, I could read a bazillion self-help books and have all kinds of words that are empty. But man, the truth of God's word cut right through all that and spoke directly to a place in my heart that God needed to address and that God needed to heal. That's the power of when we speak the truth. It's the power of when we speak God's truth to others. So how? How can we do this? We ask Jesus to heal the hurt in us. We ask Jesus to heal the hurt in us. And every single day we are bombarded in this life with all kinds of crazy things. We are, we are set in a war there's a spiritual battle that is taking place right now, and the casualties are mounting on a daily basis. But Jesus has already overcome. When, he's, when he was on the cross and he said, it is finished, man, he is the overcomer. He has overcome Satan. He has conquered death and the grave. And by his own admission, the very thing that he came here to do was to bind up the brokenhearted and set the captives free. We have brokenness in our lives. We have brokenness in our hearts. And when we bring that to Jesus and we say, I want you to speak into this. I need you to heal this place in my heart so I can operate out of a whole heart, that I can operate out of a fullness that only can come through Jesus. That's when we can begin to speak life into others. We don't have to worry about the, the heart spilling out in ugly ways, but we have aligned ourselves because he has brought true and complete healing when we surrender to him in that way. 
just this last Wednesday, uh, I spoke to uh, our youth, and uh, we had like a panel discussion, and so they were able to ask questions. And um, during that time, I, I told a couple of stories from my, my youth. Um, they'd, they'd said, you know, what it was like when, when you were a teenager and whether some of the things. And so I told a couple of stories, and then like, I mean, it's just part of my life, right? And so I tell these stories, and then I look out there, and they're like, look at me like I just said I killed a hundred puppies. Like, I'm Cruella de Vil. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shoot, what did I share? But then thinking of, like, as I, as I, as I thought about that, and, and, and the story I was telling was, was about how I used my words really to hurt someone else. And, and as, I, as I thought more about why, like, what, what was it in me at that time, and, and, and realizing that as I had been hurt in grade school, instead of taking that hurt to Jesus, I would pushed it down, and I just kind of let it sit there and stew and simmer and turn ugly. And then as, as I had an opportunity, instead of speaking life into someone, I saw it as an opportunity to kind of, like, elevate myself. I'll, I'll just kind of push them down a little bit. Doot, doot, doot. And now I'm kind of like, okay, so I can, I have some power over here. I have some power to walk around and, and also inflict pain. And if I had originally gone to Jesus and said, God, this, this hurt, this hurt me. I don't want this bitterness to grow inside me. I don't want these things in me to affect the way I speak to others. And I would not have the regret. I would not have those things of, of wishing I had lived differently. Wishing that I had not spoken into this person's life things of death and destruction. And that's available for us today. It's available for us. That's the amazing thing of God's grace and his mercy. That I don't have to live under the weight of that guilt, but I can take it to him. And I know that he is gracious, that he is quick to forgive. When we turn away from our sin, when we repent of those things, we say, man, I, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. I want, I want my words to bring life. I want my words to align. I want to be the ambassador that you have called me to be. And that very thing of being an ambassador, man, an ambassador speaks what's coming from the authority. We want to speak what is coming from the authority of heaven and by the truth of God's word sowing that into other people's lives so that we can begin to see our world transform and change, not, not for our own glory, not for our own comfort, but so that other people can live in the righteous hope of knowing that they can be a part of the kingdom of God, that there is a different way to live. Ephesians 4.31, I'll be closing with this. It says, all bitterness, anger, and wrath, shouting and slander must be removed from you along with all malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. And just hopping back up to 20, uh, verse 29 in chapter 4 of Ephesians. No foul language is to come from your mouth but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace to those who hear. And we are surrounded by people in need. They may look on the outside like an enemy, but and the enemy is the one who has come for their soul. And so as we, as we look at at and as we examine our hearts and our lives, it is so important throughout our weeks to examine and have God examine our hearts, bring ourselves to him in silence and stillness and say, Lord Jesus, what would you have me know about the condition of my heart? And when things spill out, we bring that to him and things are, words are said to us, we don't hold that grudge, but we take it to Jesus and we say, Jesus, I need you to speak into this area of my life. I do not want what this person has said to change the course, to set my path on fire. But I need you to come and rescue me in this area so that I will live out, that I will present the hope that you have offered me.
rightly and in truth and in love. And if you are here today and have not yet started that relationship with Jesus Christ, it is amazing. It is amazing. His offer is free. A free gift of salvation to anyone who will confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that he is the son of the living God. That he came to save us from our sins, that he died and that he rose again. And the offer is to live out from under the heavy weight of sin and death and knowing that we can be a child of the Most High God. That we no longer have to operate in this world with all of its hurt and its anger and its finger pointing, but we can live in a place where we speak life, where we sow seeds of righteousness into others' hearts and into our hearts. And that invitation is open for you today to start a relationship with Jesus. And he will walk with you. He will reveal to you his great love for you. He has not abandoned you. He is ready to receive you with open arms, to forgive all, all the things of the past. And I'm glad, I'm glad that he has revealed himself to me in that way. And he's ready to reveal himself to you today. And that is good. Would you all bow your heads with me this morning? If that is you this morning, if you are being prompted by the Holy Spirit, and that's what that is, that, that thing of like, man, I, I want to know more about Jesus. And that is the Holy Spirit knocking on the door of your heart. If you have had words spoken over you, if you no longer can see the hope for your life, and Jesus is ready to speak into that hurt, and he's ready to bring new life and new hope through the power of his son. If you are here today and you would like to receive Christ, if you would like to, to take that step of saying, I want to surrender my heart to him, would you raise your hand this morning? Amen. Amen. Anyone else? So I'll have you pray along with me. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my heart. I ask that you would forgive me for those things that I have done that were in opposition to your plan for my life. I ask you to come in and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And it is...